Today on the A Game, we will discuss App State's 54-7 win over Savannah State on Saturday. And later on, we'll update you on some App State volleyball and men's soccer recap versus Long Island. You won't want to miss two goals from Ava Dawson to lead the women's soccer team to their first victory of the season, so stay right here on the A Game. App State easily beat Savannah State on Saturday to open up their home schedule for the 2017 season. Ashley Smith was roaming the sideline once again and has more on the App State's first win of the season. Starting the Mountaineers off early in the game is number 25, Jayla Moore, with his first touchdown run of the season to put seven on the board. Quarterback Taylor Lamb connects with senior tight end Levi Duffield with a 57-yard reception, giving App the 14-0 lead halfway through the first quarter. Savannah State running back Rashad Saxton goes to run the ball up the middle, but is met by defensive lineman number 96, Markel Clark, with a huge tackle to stop the Tiger offense. Five seconds into the second quarter, Lamb throws his second touchdown of the day to Zai Letman, with the rest of the offense rushing in to celebrate. Tiger quarterback TJ Bell drops back to pass, but is immediately hit from the blind side by number 97, Caleb Sperlin. The big time play of the day came from Lamb with a 68-yard pass to tie it in Colin Reed, scoring his first touchdown of the season to make the score 28 to nothing in the second quarter. No surprise here, with about five minutes left of the second quarter, Lamb sends the ball downfield to wide receiver Ike Lewis to move the Mountaineers into scoring position. Lamb ends his offensive run with a final touchdown pass to Reed. Reed ended his day with two touchdowns and 106 receiving yards. The offense for Savannah State couldn't get going, which led to a safety after the handoff didn't go as planned in the third quarter. Quarterback Jacob Huseman saw his first action of the game in the fourth quarter with a handoff to Terrence Upshaw for a late touchdown, sealing the victory for the Mountaineers. The Appalachian State Mountaineers took on Savannah State here at Kid Brewer Stadium. With a bounce back win again after the loss to Georgia last week, 54-7, our tight end stood out amongst our running backs and wide receivers. Head coach Scott Satterfield talked about how they incorporated the tight ends this week more than normal because they're used to blocking. Well, I think, yeah, I think it was kind of, we, we had it in up this week and we thought we would maybe have a shot just based off what they did last year. We thought we'd have an opportunity to maybe make some plays. And, you know, and sometimes you go into games and you're thinking one thing that just doesn't pan out. Well, tonight it panned out for the tight ends. and. And really, we hit uh, the three plays that we scored on were three plays that we had specifically this week that we thought would have a chance to get a big play. And it just so happened they all three scored. The team heads into next week ready for the game against Texas State. With App TV in the A game, I'm Ashley Smith. App State will take on Texas State this coming weekend for their first conference game of the year before returning home to take on Wake Forest September the 23rd. Desmond Reed is here in studio again and is ready to tell us how football will prepare for Texas State and what he saw from the team on Saturday. All this and more coming up on the A-Game. Hey, I'm Taylor Lamb and you're watching the A-Game. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org. Welcome back to the A-Game, and our football coverage continues from this past weekend's win over Savannah State. And perhaps you're asking the question, after a big loss against Georgia, a big loss against, or a big win against Savannah State, how are they going to play when they go and play against a team that's closer to their competition, when in the fourth quarter it's a one-score game, Maybe you asked that question because I asked the same question, and that's why we have Desmond Reed in-house. He's our A-game college football analyst, and he's going to try and uh, guide us through these questions we have because after a big win like that, there's going to be several questions. And so I'm going to ask you this, Desmond. When they win 54-7 to against Savannah State and lose 31-10, to 
How, does, how do you think this team will respond when they play a close game? Maybe it's down to the wire uh, middle of the season. I feel like they'll respond like always, and that's playing hard and playing together and playing smart. Um, the offense, they look fresh and they look like they always did last Saturday. I feel like the defense, you know, they did what they had to do. They got sacks, they made plays, they got three and outs. I feel like they did exactly what the game plan was, and I feel like they'll do that in any type of game. So Texas State coming up this weekend, they got to travel down there this, this Saturday. First conference foe of the season. What's, what's one thing that you might expect that App may struggle with against Texas State? Because I know, as you mentioned earlier, they're a, they're a young and inexperienced team, but what's one thing they might run into trouble with with Texas State? Uh, from the previous year, Texas State, they was very young. Um, they had, a, I think, a, a new coach come in. So a lot of things there was kind of new. Um, this year we're going to get a, a kind of fully loaded team. You know, App, they're going to get their best shot. You know, Texas State, you know, their, their pride down there in Texas is playing hard football as well as it is in Boone. So, the, uh, so App going to get their best shot, but I feel like if the depth of App State D-line and the, the depth of App State wide receiver core, I feel like they can all make plays and get into the, get into the backfield on defense and scoring touchdowns on offense, I feel like they have no worries. So you're a big defensive guy for obvious reasons. You played defense <laughs> last year for App State. Right. Who, who are a couple of players that are standing out for you right now on that Coach Woody defense you mentioned last week? Uh, well, you, well, you have to start off with the, the Legion of Boone um, and D Des Franklin, uh, number six. He's, he's a tremendous um, safety, hard-hitting safety. Uh, he comes down and <clears throat> he, he, he brings a good blow. Um, you also have, you know, A.J. Howard. Um, you know, Tay Hayes out there and, you know, you know, Clifford Duck, you know, Legion of Boone, they, they, they really, they really proud on their name and they, they kind of locked down this past Saturday. So I'm really excited on Texas State and throughout the season. So now you've been on the sidelines for two games so far this season not as a non-player. What are you, what are, from your perspective on the sideline, what are you seeing from this defense uh, right now? What are, are there anything that they need to improve on? as they try and lead in the Wake Forest, or, or how are they playing right now as a team? I feel like everybody just have to keep buying in. Um, being on the sideline, watching, instead of playing, you know, you see a lot of uh, different roles. You know, a lot of guys that was on the team last year, their, their role has, has changed tremendously. Now some of them are stepping to a leadership role, or if, if a guy with a red shirt, they're now expected to, hey, I need you to get 10, 15 snaps this game and be able to hold your own while you're out there. So I feel like, you know, going to Texas State and then coming back home for a blackout gives Wake Forest, I feel like um, there's a, it's, a lot more, it's a lot more work to do, but that's every week. But I feel like App State, they'll be, they'll be ready and they'll be well prepared. So there's been a lot of talk the past week or so about Taylor Lamb, <clears throat> senior quarterback for the Mountaineers, he was only 11 touchdowns away from breaking Armani Edwards going into this game, his all-time passing touchdowns record here at App State. After throwing five touchdowns, a career high for him this past uh, Saturday, he's only six away now. What, for, from Taylor Lamb, what did you see that was really clicking for him against Savannah State? Uh, he, he looked more relaxed. Um, you know, like you say, he threw five, and, you know, he also had 300 yards underneath his belt. So, right. You know, he had, a, he, had, he had a great day, but he looked more relaxed. Uh, Coach Satterfield did a great job of, you know, relaxing him in the game, in, into the game with the running game and opening it up with the play action, you know, giving it to Colin Reed twice and actually in D1 Duff, you know, won, won for a touchdown as well. So I feel like they did a, they did a great job with, you know, you know, making them, getting them comfortable, settled down and just feeling, feeling like home like they did. So how about the guy that lines up with him in the backfield, Jalen Moore? Two games now, and he's still combined for those two games, has not rushed for 100 yards yet this season. Uh, wh what's going on with Jalen Moore? Like, what, what can we expect to see from the preseason all, all, all Sun Belt team? Well, he's won it, you know. Um, everybody in the Sun Belt, they're coming for, it. They're coming for him. Um, he's the, the reigning offensive player of the year in the mm -hmm. Sun Belt. So what more could you ask for? I feel like Jalen Moore, he's doing – Everything he can do, he he he's still getting you know five yards of pop here and there, still delivering a great blow, and still establishing a running game. So there's nothing that he has to do more or needs to do less. Uh, he just has to keep going out there and and performing the way he performed, and 
And then he has a player partner now with Terrence Upshaw. You know, Terrence Upshaw also had a touchdown. So I feel like, you know, he did he did pretty well, you know, in that game and leading up to it. So one more question before we try and roll the highlight and break a few more things down. Um, as a player, when you've been in games before um, where you're winning by however so many points, where's the point in the game? Is it the third quarter or when you're up by like 40? <coughs> where, where's the point in the game where you say, ah, you know, we, we've tried this in practice, but we haven't been able to try it in a game. So when you're up by so many points, where do you say, okay, I want to implement this, this, and this, and this, and see how the team reacts to playing at that point in the game? I think that's something more that we'll, that at, we'll do in practice more than so in the game. When it comes to a game, <clears throat> I feel like they want to know when in the league is getting, you know, tremendous out of hand, they want to know how well can we finish a game? How well can the twos and the threes can come in and play just like the ones did? So I don't really think it's more of a, of a pop quiz. I just think it's more of a oh, how can we execute better for the next week and, and so on and so on. All right, so next week to play Texas State on the road, and now we're going to roll a few highlights for you. And we're just going to basically roll the whole clip, and we're just going to kind of talk through a few players and a few plays that stood out from our perspective on the sideline and just kind of walk through those plays as they roll through the screen. So uh, first play here, uh, I see Taylor Lamb just handing off to Jalen Moore. What, what's, uh, so you, we mentioned a few times about Jalen Moore. Uh, he got that first touchdown of the season for him. Um, how do you think that might affect uh, the way he plays, getting that first touchdown? Um, you know, that's, you know, that's a, a player's dream to have. You know, the home opener, you get a, you get a nice touchdown to start the game off. Um, I feel like, like I said, he's doing everything he can. And then the tight ends, uh, both of them uh, on Saturday, really worked well. And from my perspective, it seemed like their size, their overall size against the defensive backs of Savannah State really is what helped. But was there something else that was just working well for Taylor Lamb with those connections with the tight ends? Uh, yeah, the tight ends, they, they just can't went out there and execute it just how they did. They do it all the time. Um, coming from last year with um, Bear Burns at, uh, leaving, so Colin Reed and – and Duffield, they definitely stepped up and d did a tremendous job by getting an open help to T. Lamb. And then here's uh, here's uh, <coughs> Jalen Jalen Moore's uh, uh, sidekick there, I guess you could say, Terrence Upshaw. What what do you see from him? Because this is going to be a big season for him to be able to come in there and, and work alongside Jalen Moore. They definitely have a great one-two punch. Um, Terrence Upshaw, he's he he gives a, a different style. You know, he had definitely had that that stop and go. You know, Jay Moore, he's going to come straight at you and make you miss. Jay, uh, Terrence Upshaw definitely have that extremely stop and go burst to get to the next level, and they did that this game. And then once again, Taylor Lamb, another touchdown <coughs> here. A career day for him, five touchdowns. Mm -hmm. He's never done that before, so he's only six away, as we mentioned again, against that, uh, that all-time passing touchdowns record. Uh, overall, as a team, going into practice this week, what do you think Coach Satterfield might be saying to the team to help them mentally focus for Texas State? Um, do your job. Just do your job. Um, the defense, they're going to do their job. The offense, they have to do their job as well. Um, I feel like Coach Whitty is definitely going to have that defense running around on, for, on Saturday, and I feel like Coach Set is definitely going to have that running game going nicely smooth and the wide receivers getting open and tight ends making plays. All right, man. Well, uh, we'll let this rest of the highlight play out here. And one thing, too, have you ever been on the other side of a, a blowout uh, in the way that you get beat by, you know, 40, 50 points? What, how do you, how, if you're Savannah State, <coughs> how do they respond from this, or how do they shake that off? Uh, Savannah State, they just have to, you know, get in quick, forget about it, and go on to the next week. Get in, watch the film, and see, make the corrections, and knows you did right, knows you did wrong, so then you go out there on Saturday that you'll know exactly what, you know, you want to do better, and you definitely don't want to go backwards. Yeah, and Coach Eric Rayburn, their head coach, is one of the things he's done so well in his 17-year career as a head coach. It's only his second year at Savannah State, but he can really rebuild a program, so that's one thing I'm sure he'll be able to work on this week in practice with his Tigers. Uh, but thanks again for joining us, man. We really appreciate you coming and giving us some insight, answering our questions, and uh, pre previewing Texas State this weekend. So thanks a lot, Des. Thank you. Uh, coming up on the A game, we've got highlights from volleyball, men's, and women's soccer. You're not going to want to miss Ava Dawson and what she was able to do in two goals that she scored uh, this past week.
That's all up next on the A-Game. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. The men's soccer team took on Long Island University last weekend here in Boone and tied one-to-one -one after extra time. Jamie Patel was on hand for the game and has the story. Following Ian Bennett's goal from the penalty spot, the Blackbirds search for an equaliser as Eric Woolen's effort was parried away from danger by Jake Chasty. Midway through the first half, Daniel Avila cut inside and called a powerful strike inches away from the top corner and flipped the top of the crossbar. Bennett nearly grabbed his and the Mountaineers second when he fired a dipping volley off the bar after a knockdown from Hernandez. Following Long Island's equaliser, the apps were pressing for a late winner in the second half and Juan Hernandez nearly grabbed it, but his fierce shot rattled off the inside of the post and out of play. With under a minute left in regulation, LIU Brooklyn nearly netted a winner through Zach Peterson after his looping header towards goal was tipped over by Jake Chastain out of harm's way. Onwards to extra time and Daniel Avila was put through by Ian Bennett, but the winger's shot was always bending away from goal. The Mountaineers faced off against LIU Brooklyn this past Sunday here at Ted Mackerel Soccer Complex. They drew 1-1 after extra time. Ian Bennett put them in front in the first half early on after Frogman was brought down into the box and Bennett tucked away the penalty with cool, calm collectiveness. Late in the match, legs are heavy, we played a tough game Friday night, not a whole lot of time recovered, but I mean, we had some good opportunities and didn't capitalize as well as we should have. However, in the second half, LIU Brooklyn drew level thanks to Naeem Charles' finish into the top right-hand corner. For App TV and the A-Game, I'm Jamie Patel. The team will be on the road at Wake Forest September 12th and will return home September 16th to play Longwood. The women's soccer team took on the Davidson Wildcats this past Thursday night and won a close one, 3-2. Davidson had lost their past four games by a combined eight goals, but took an early one to mill lead when Allison Gray slipped a shot just past the keeper, Taylor Ray. Ava Dawson would tie the score off a header that sailed over the head of keeper Kendall Thomas, who thought the ball was going over the goal. The Wildcats regained the lead in the 22nd minute when Cameron France scored off a rebound of a beautiful save from Taylor Ray. However, Appalachian came roaring back less than a minute later when Avon Dawson took another strike and a brilliant one at that in the top left-hand corner to make the score 2-2. Two two. The comeback was completed in the 88th minute when Sharon Osterbein robbed the ball off a Davison defender and fired a glorious shot off the fingertips of Thompson and into the back of the net to give the Mountaineers their first victory of the season. I think the girls played hard. I mean, we've been playing really, really good soccer, you know, um, and creating opportunities and, and really, you know, not quite finishing opportunities. Um, but, you know, I thought that the girls got in the box. They did well. Ava played, you know, 90 minutes of super hard, aggressive soccer, um, you know, really focusing on winning the first and second ball. But, you know, they were there were several girls that were super dangerous, and Sharon's goal at the end was just awesome. The Abs lost to UNC Wilmington two days later, 2-1 to one in overtime and will not be back in action again until September the 15th when they travel to South Alabama to kick off their conference play season. The volleyball team traveled to North Dakota to play in the University of North Dakota Classic on Friday. The Mountaineers won their first match over South Dakota State 3-1 and lost their second match 3-0 against University of North Dakota. Saturday's matches against George Washington and North Dakota State ended in a split of the North Dakota State Invitational. App won the five-step match against George Washington and lost her second five-step match of the day against North Dakota State. The Mountaineers will go to the College of Charleston Invitational this Friday. Thanks once again for watching The A-Game. Follow us on Twitter at The A-Game Sports. We'll be keeping you up to date on everything App State, so don't miss another chance to give us that follow. Also, this show is posted every week on Facebook, so feel free to share the post with your friends and tell us what you like about the show. See you next week. Same time, same place, right here 
on the A game.